Hello. Uh, so this, I think, will be my last video on this still life drawing. I've been spending some time on my drawing here, and um, I'm going to spend some more time on it. Um, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through a couple things that I did to handle um, that, that transition from going from kind of a, a generic, kind of clunky version of the still life to a more refined, realistic looking uh, drawing. Um, remember, as I said in the Collaborate session, um, you know, even if we don't wind up with a black and white photograph, you know, really, really heavily um, detailed, we still want to go through that experience. We want to go through that experience of kind of studying every little nook and cranny of the, um, of the photograph and how um, you know these leaves on the pineapple go from dark to light and dark to light from left to right. Um, you know the nature of these um, these little shapes, these little kind of like scales that are on the pineapple, um, the different nuanced um, lights and darks and things that are happening in the apple and throughout the whole thing. So, and we saw that in um, you know like Victoria's. We saw that in a bunch of. Um, examples that we looked at and collaborate how people are kind of buckling down and getting into the detail. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time drawing here. Um, I just wanted to kind of update you a little bit on um, where I'm at. So what I did is, is I kind of went into each, um, each object and even the background and the foreground with a kind of a, a little bit more focus, kind of a finer tooth comb. And I went through and I said, okay, you know, did I have a, a raggy edge here or did I have a line that I wanted to get rid of? And I would get rid of that line. I would clean it up. I was doing a lot of um, background work, so I was able to cut into my pineapple with my background chalk and then go back into the background. So, like, for example, I would come into the pineapple um, leaves with the black, and then I could go back into it. And, I, and there's that kind of back and forth that happens a lot of times um, with with this type of drawing. It's very important too that as you are drawing and you're making your decisions about your drawing, you have that photograph with you. Now, you can notice here probably that I can get away with a little bit of fudging in here, all right? So I can kind of put a lot of information in here and then at some point I can kind of get through there and just sort of fake it. Now, of course, if I had more time or if I wanted to go even more detailed, I could, you know, sort of buckle down even more and really get into this very careful. We're talking about hours and hours of really getting into this um, uh, careful observation and study of all these different surfaces. OK, now what I'm doing right now, just as we're on the, the video here is, is I'm taking um, just go grab a Q-tip if you have one. Hopefully you've got a Q-tip or something like it. Go grab a Q-tip and you can see that I went through here and I put kind of like cross hatching. I even did it in areas with my um, with the uh, the eraser. You can see down here where I wanted to lighten up some areas along the um, tablecloth here, and I just sort of scratched it in. I sort of just did one of these numbers here where I come in like that, kind of just removing some of that now. Most of you aren't going to want to leave that scratchy look, okay? Um, so you're going to come in with the Q-tip or your finger. And again, while you're looking at the photograph, very important that you're still looking at that photograph, you can go in and you can just kind of smudge out some of that. So in other words, it gives you an opportunity to kind of add value or take away value very softly and subtly, and then go through with that Q-tip and see if you can't knock it back down because you don't want that um, all that line work visible in your drawing. So I just take that Q-tip and again while looking at my photograph and if I placed my darks and lights uh, properly I should be able to go in here and smooth some of that out. And again we don't want to generically smooth it out. If I go into this foreground here with my Q-tip and again I could use my finger too in the bigger areas, it's probably safer to use your finger because you can cover more area and, and you know, it's, it's a little bit easier to come in here and knock out some of that, um, some of that scratchiness that I put in with my, uh, with my eraser. And again, I, as I'm doing this, 
let's say that I knocked that out too much. Well, you know what? I took too much of it out, so I want to put a little bit more value in there like this, and then I can kind of smudge it out again, and, and the same thing might happen, and I have to go back and add more, okay? If we look at this apple, I came in here and I added some of that kind of scratchy with that vine charcoal. Look at how delicate that stuff is. It just disappears when you touch it. So you got to be very careful and, and very uh, uh, light-handed when you come through to manipulate that chalk or that uh, vine charcoal because it it really um, is very fragile and it's very quick to just disappear on you. Okay. I already did some work in on these spoons and this fork here, or the spoon and fork, I should say. Some of the scratchiness back here, I want to kind of make go away. And again, using that uh, Q-tip because I'm in a tighter area, but in those open areas, I might come in. Now, why? How can I just go ahead and just take my finger and just run it around here without? really, you know, stopping and being overly detailed. It's because I did a lot of the detail work with the finer uh, tools, either the uh, eraser on the number two pencil or the vine charcoal. So I'm already pretty confident that I've got basically the right stuff in here. Okay, it's just, it was maybe put in a little, it's a little heavy or whatever. So I'm just using this Q-tip. Let me go in here and re repair this right here. So we want to get some of that pineapple that dark pineapple back in there so that I differentiate between my cup and my pineapple okay and just kind of coming in here and again really trying to look at that photograph as you do it you don't want to just generically smudge all this stuff and then be right back where you were or you just got rid of all your good stuff and now, now you got to go back in and put it all back in there so looking at that photograph you can even use that uh, q-tip as a kind of a drawing tool and make some of those changes so that they're changes that are um, consistent with what you're seeing up on your uh, photograph okay again just kind of coming in here and i kind of almost seeking out some of that graininess getting rid of that linear stuff trying to make it a little bit more natural looking if things get sort of jumbled and confused, they don't look too good, you gotta go back in there and kind of pull them back out. This is a great opportunity too to kind of clean up edges. If you have like a dark background like I do and then a sharp edge on your on your drawing, um, you know, you're gonna to wanna to sharpen that edge up a little bit just to get it to pop a little bit more, okay? Um, you know, you could go ahead and add in some details just whatever you see on your photograph these over here maybe getting a little bit dark a little bit light so I could knock those down a bit okay let's let's um, get a little bit of separation between this apple and the pineapple okay so just a little bit more chalk there just to get that push-pull thing going on here we got a little bit of a separation issue here let's just kind of fake a little line in there to get us a little little bit of separation between the glass and the pineapple. Once in a while we do that, even if it's not in the drawing. I know that contradicts what I said already, but um, we want to come in and just sort of, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of uh, differentiate or to um, accentuate different parts of our of our objects so they they want to pop you've heard the phrase um highlight before so we want to go in and and that's also a, another thing that you want to be doing right now is you want to start looking for opportunities to highlight you don't want to overdo it but if i want to get a nice bright highlight up on this uh wine bottle there i'll do that okay re um reassure that you've got some nice bright highlights on your tablecloth. We need that white in there to kind of expand that range of value that we're looking for. Okay, now this drawing uh, needs a little bit, what are we at time-wise, Natalie? 9.40. Okay, so let's get this done here. Um, this drawing needs a little bit more love in here, but um, we can uh, at least start to see this thing really emerge 
getting rid of a lot of that uh, that residue from your eraser and stuff. Okay, I'll tap this down a little bit. Okay, can you get a good shot of that, Natalie? All right, so you can see here um, that now I've put in my darks, put in my lights, brought out some details, um, really just studying the objects carefully, uh, scrutinizing everything I do on my photograph, trying to identify my whites and my blacks wherever they need to be, uh, putting in some of this uh, nice um, scratchy kind of linear stuff to get things to behave and then going back later and kind of smoothing them back out. A little bit of that scratchiness, if it's in your drawing, I think sometimes it can be a good thing, okay? Um, if we just look right here, like I noticed this little uh, circle right here kind of disappeared on me. So I could come in and just, again, use that and then just kind of knock it back down and there's my circle, it's back in there again. Okay, I could even kind of fake and add one right here just to give that cup a little bit more character. Okay, kind of come in like that. It's like a little juice glass that has these like little uh, impressions of circles in them. Kind of cool. Um, kind of hard to draw though. So there. So, so basically, this is a, as I said earlier, this is an exercise in observation. We are, um, you know, we're using our ability to look at something and scrutinize it and then take that information and apply it to the drawing, all right? So, you know, you gotta keep in mind that this is as much about drawing and the skill of drawing as it is about um, being able to notice stuff, being able to see that stuff is happening in your drawing. That's half the battle. If you can see that um, things are going on in your drawing, you're gonna be in good shape in making this drawing because you, you, um, you've got the information you need. You've got the the, the reference and the data that you need to make this drawing work. So the way that I'll wrap up and the way that I think you guys should wrap up is to just keep scrutinizing it and keep editing it until you feel like, you know what, I've been, I've been to that wine bottle so many times, I like the way it looks, I can't think of a way to make it any better, I'm gonna just say, I'm not going back to that wine bottle right there, okay? And if you do that, you know, if, you, if you're honest with yourself and you've given it your best effort, then that's how you finish a drawing. That's the, that's the trick, is you, you edit it until the point where you can't edit anymore, you draw to a level of satisfaction, and it's over. You finished it. You can sneak in a couple lines here and there just to kind of get things to pop. You've got to be careful with your line usage. Okay, you don't want to get, get too carried away with that. So anyway, I'll post a picture. I'll put it in the content area of our Blackboard shell um, when I am finished, but um, it's not going to look a whole lot different than this, but I will add some more high and low lights and things and uh, maybe do a little bit more detail work. But So this is an example of kind of what I'm expecting from you guys. So, um, you know, hang in there. Um, really give it your best shot. I, I, the ones that I saw in Collaborate look awesome, and the people that emailed me what, how they're doing, you guys are in great shape. Uh, finish strong and, and um, you know, you'll be happy with it. And then you'll have an opportunity on your outside of class drawing to just go nuts and do whatever you want. You know, forget about all this academic stuff and just do a drawing that makes you happy and, and brings you joy. So, all right. So everybody uh, have a wonderful day and check out this video and um, I'll be talking with you next week, Monday. Take care.